Good morning. Welcome back to the course. In this lecture, we'll take you to the lab for the laboratory demonstration. Now this process is known as parking. We are parking like car parking. We are parking like kind of homing. So it is parking the head at the left side, left corner of the machine. Now after setting the G code and making all these settings, we are here to prepare the bed, to prepare the bed for machining. Okay? To prepare the bed and uh, to set up all the uh, things like spool, filament uh, will uh, induce will uh, filament through the rollers that would come through the extruder and uh, we'll try to see that whether it comes properly or not before that the heating is there heating that was done that we the commands that we gave the heating was there the bed is uh, getting hot or it has come uh, close to the temperature that was given 55 degrees the nozzles are close to 230 degrees so the temperature uh, is kind of trying to come to this uh, uh, desired input here to 230 degrees for the nozzle, 55 degrees for the bed. It will take about 15 minutes. By the time we can prepare the bed. So let us try to start the cleaning and loading and unloading of the material. This is the cutter that is be used to cut the filament okay, if required. So this is the tube, this is a tube through which the filament would for, come through. Okay. It provides proper path to the filament. Okay. This tube is attached to fila, filament head. This is spatula, this is this be used to clean the bed. So this is uh, uh, distilled water with some uh, cleansing agent here, a few drops, uh, so, so some of the liquid cleaner is sprayed and it is cleaned with the help of spatula. So the whole machine head here is actually glass, so we have to be careful. So what is this white milky color, white milky material? It is nothing but we have used five stick. That is the adhesive material, this five stick. So we are again applying some more five stick. So it will help you lock the first layer. As we said before, we have put our CAD at the center of the envelope. So that is why we are preparing the portion that is sent at the center. So a thin coat of set heavy fabric is applied at the center. Now this is our head. This is our and there are <coughs> heaters here. Okay, that are heating the filament. The spool is coming through this tube, this white tube. The filament is coming through this white tube. Okay. So this is the head that can be moved or oh, this is uh, our uh, X and Y movement. Okay. Z movement that actually bed is moving up and down that movement is controlled with bed and uh, there are two nozzles here. The so only one nozzle is active at this point of time. Okay. So let us see how to load and unload the filament. So this is this black portion, this is a PU connector. So PU connector can be connected, it can be screwed in and out. So we have unscrewed it. Okay. So in PU connector is according to the size of the tube, PU connector is exactly that the tube would exactly fit into that. So this support, so this is these are our rollers. We are taking it off. We are unloading the filament now. Okay, unloading the filament. You can see. 
this is again this is the filament of size 1.75 mm now we can see that the filament uh, a little is little distorted from the tip that is uh, it wouldn't enter the rollers properly okay the tip of the filament or the end of the filament is not proper so we are going to cut it we have cut it so it is now flat at the end or square at the end so this is the roller this would help to take the filament forward when this rotates the filament is carried forward okay in this direction upward direction now we are entering the filament into the tube that is connected to the uh, PG connector and this tube is also um, very much according to the diameter of the filament 1.75 inside diameter 1.75 plus alliance alliance is 0.1 1.85 mm inner dia now this PU support tube the filament support tube is connected to the PG connector okay now we will see that whether it is working properly or not. Now we will lock the PG connector, we have locked the PG connector there, we lock this PG connector here as this, this PG connector is locked here. So, this roller that I mentioned that is responsible for feeding, this is also known as feeder. So, we are using this pulley and feeder two rollers one roller is pulley another roller is feeder we can see that the loading of filament is properly done now we can see that whether the filament is coming through the nozzle or not yes it is coming now this means the temperature is now maintained now we will use these two clips to hold the glass with the bed with the table bed ok. So, this bed is uh, at the temperature of 50 to 55 degree centigrade. So, to hold them we use these two clips ok. We will put clips here and here so that it holds gets properly over here and, and at the other diagonal end ok. So, where are the heaters for the bed? Now, we can go at the bottom of the bed, uh, let me uh, try, try camera would go at the bottom of the bed, this is the bottom of the bed, there are heaters here, we can see there are heaters attached here ok. And the base is aluminum, this bed base is aluminum, there are heaters there and on the aluminum base over and on the top of the aluminum base we have put a glass, glass plate on which the actual fabrication would take place. So, it is the one clip is put here, another clip is put on the other side. So, everything is in its place now. The temperatures are uh, like we see uh, filament was coming out of the nozzle, the temperature is close to what we require, close to means uh, if we have put input 230 degree centigrade as we know that it would not be exactly 230 degree centigrade all the time, it might vary like 2, 3 degrees or 5 degrees variation, but yes that is the working temperature. The temperatures are set 230 degrees centigrade for filament, 50 to 55 degrees for table. The uh, loading of the material is there, the rollers are engaged, rollers the two uh, rollers means the rollers one is the pulley, pulley and the feeder is engaged, filament is coming properly, the bed is prepared, we have applied fabric stick to make sure that the material sticks there and the cleaning of the bed is. So, uh, before print preview, uh, we will just come to manual control here in manual control. So, we will we are going to check manually that whether the things are moving or yes we are we are checking the material is coming in, material is coming out you can see the material is coming out. So, we are manually checking whether the feeder is working or not ok. So, the material is coming out the extruder is being checked here. 
for its proper setting. Again, we can see the student is activated. In this way, we check that everything is uh, quite well or not. Now, the temperature is actually 53, 230 degree, yes, the temperature is 230 degree, 230 degrees for the extruder 1, 53.6 degrees is uh, for the bed. Yes, that means the as I said 5 degree variation, um, I would like to correct myself, this machine is quite precise or sensitive to temperature. So, the temperature 53 degree was set, so it is within 1 degree. Like 20, 230, it might be 229 or 231, so within 1 degree of uh, the resolution. So, last thing left is we come to print preview and we start the print. Now, when we start printing, machine will go and check everything. First, it will go and check the parking place that at the corner. So, this is known as referencing, it is uh, checking the height, the height of the job, you can see the rotation, the z direction is moving up, the table is moving up. Okay. So, the bed is trying to touch the nozzle top, the bed is trying to touch the nozzle top to set the 0 value. Again, you can see the rotation, the bed is moving up, the up in upward direction, because we do not know what is the thickness of the glass, glass plate that we put on and also there is there uh, of the fabric as well that we have that is there. So, the bed would touch the nozzle end to set the 0 value. Now, yes, it has started the printing the first layer is started here now, it is now printing, it is minting, this is the brim command that we mentioned before and brim is being fabricated before actual model. So, this is the very first line that is being drawn by the machine. So, it is running at the speed, so it is actually uh, while brim the it is actually the printing only the, while printing the speed of the first layer was uh, 40 millimeters per second it is moving at this speed. So, this part would stick with the base again brim would stick with the base this is the extra part. Okay. Now, we can see here that how the feeder helps to feed the material. This is the feeder, feeder is rotating, okay. this is the roller mechanism here, okay. pulley and feeder, pulley and feeder is there, feeder is rotating to feed the material towards the upward direction. So, this is not the part of the CAD, but this is used for the deposition. So, this is how the machining is happening. Okay. So, So, this is how the machining is happening. So, it will make the first layer brim that will start manufacturing the part. So, the time for the machining if you remember was 5 hours of and few minutes, it will take this much of time. So, by the time the machining happens, let us try to see the different parts, different components which are here in the manufacturing in the 4i lab. Actually, we have to wait for 5 hours to see the final production, the final part. So, you can see the roller mechanism closely. Okay, this is used for deposition. 
so it will take 5 hours for the machining to happen so by the time let us try to see the different components uh, in uh, 4i lab which are fabricated and uh, using the rapid prototyping and uh, uh, other machines as well specifically for rapid prototyping there are certain components we are going to talk about a few beautiful and important features that uh, we talked before as well that those are produced using FDM technologies uh, that is fused deposition method. Now with 3D printing that is uh, this specific machine TAC V30, this 3D printing machine we have produced this geometric crank, okay, this is produced with this, this machine. Now this kind of hollow cylindrical job can also be produced. Uh, this is pipe shaped with lock or uh, with a locking device sometimes we get very challenging kind of jobs for instance uh, this is a propeller this is a propeller fan okay so uh, what it does is uh, this you can see you can see the number of fins here the number of very fine fins the gaps between the fins is very less the angle is very important here so this is impeller so it is impeller it just sucks and throws out the fluid okay so here angle is very important so this is a complicated job so its fabrication is really complicated really tough so it is it is typical to fabricate it with any other machining like uh, milling turning or the conventional machines or with maybe with cnc uh, general machining so now this technology FDM helps us to work freely to produce these, these, these kinds of parts. Okay. So, in medical sciences, you know, you know we have this foot, uh, you know, we can, we can produce artificial limbs, uh, for instance, left leg, right leg, and we have to fabricate artificial limbs, uh, for instance, for a particular man or, or lady, uh, and we are not able to copy, if, for instance, someone has lost its limb. It is, he has lost his left leg. What we can see, we can just scan his right leg and using mirror command, we can produce the left leg. This can also happen. So, this is artificial uh, foot that is produced. Okay. It is actually the pattern for the shoe here. So, there are certain other components kept here. So, 3D printing what we need, we need to have the scan model sometimes or the CAD model has to be there, the CAD model can be produced uh, by someone, by an engineer or uh, it can be even scanned model which can be then transferred into the um, CAD model. Okay. So, also you can see another model here, this is a beautiful feature, this, this, this impeller is a beautiful feature. You can see the angle, you can see the accuracy, um, really very good. So, scanning helps in a way that you need to put any extra efforts for uh, CAD, modeling, designing, putting all that in, the scanning helps in that. So, this is a pen stand, this is a pen stand and the, now we need to, if we need to model the same, we can scan it, we can scan it using 3D scanning. Threading, 3D scanning means from all the directions, from the different, uh, uh, the different scanners are there, like different degrees of freedom of all the scanners are there, and we have produced the similar model. So the scanning took about two hours, and uh, the printing, this printing of this model took about two hours. So within, let me say, two hours for scanning, two hours for scanning, and two hours maybe I will say two hours for printing. In within four hours we can produce the same product or we can copy the product. Okay. This is re-engineering, this is re-engineering like scanning and producing an van. So, it has produced in a very fast pace within 4 hours like I said. So, that is why this machine is also known as rapid prototyping machine. So, we can produce very rapidly just scanning and producing, scanning and producing. That is why the term rapid prototyping and rapid manufacturing comes into play. Also a few creative items are kept. So, this is a complicated model okay, of uh, maybe some holy person. Okay. This is a human skull. So,
so with scanning we can just scan the model and produce it again okay so scanners are highly capable to scan anything even uh, we can scan the live humans and uh, uh, after scanning we can produce the replica and same scan data can be used for printing when we scan so white light scanners are there like white light scanners are used to scan the human body so in general care we have to draw we have to I mean put to the machine and all those things are to be there the 3d scanning helps the 3d now that 3d is a very use in engineering and mechanical background so in fora lab it is a high tech lab at iit kanpur we deal with this kind of unconventional manufacturing methods so fdm is uh, quite possible is in rapid prototyping is very unconventional method of machining with 3d printing technology we can print this kind of creative jobs like this hollow cylinder okay this kind of hollow cylinder now the beauty of these two models is that this model this skull is solid and this is hollow this is hollow from inside okay this is lightweight and this is solid this is quite heavy but the beauty is that we have scanned and printed them the interesting thing is that whatever we scan we got the components exactly matching the features those were scanned so there are other machines as well uh, in a, like cnc milling cnc turning so this is a metal part uh, this is a ball inside a metal cage okay this is not rapid prototyping but uh, we are just mentioning a few components with the feature here it was a cube and uh, it is machined with milling machine with a cnc milling machine from all the faces and uh, a ball is left inside so this is, this is example of subtractive method not additive manufacturing so it is subtractive manufacturing with milling so same kind of job we can manufacture with 3d printing okay in that case we will have a support and the modern materials you know now this is happening this first layer was brim and after first layer the other layer the second layer is now being manufactured now it is preparing support you can see it is preparing support here because there was an angle in the component now what this component is this component is actually a key that is to be kept into the machine a key and key that will be inserted and that will lock the two different uh, parts of the assembly okay you can see the machine moving so other components are here like uh, we work in uh, additive manufacturing and uh, subtractive manufacturing both in fora lab so in both the mode as we work so let us see the other uh, parts which are manufactured here see all these white components are manufactured using 3d printing okay all these white components are from this 3d printing so let us see some other components or other uh, models which are manufactured now this is a model the or machining this is actually the printing on the wood that is itk lobo itk lobo logo and the fdm titan knife set whatever it is for i have for i laboratory iit this you know this, you can see the complication of the deep features in the part this is manufactured using the laser machine that is here this printing uh, this is printing in teak ply and we print and cut when we assemble uh, so this is a printing and laser cutting of wood this is in a teak ply the 3d model is made now this is actually a very old technology cut and paste cut and paste there was no 3d printing and no advanced machines were there so this was the way to develop the model so we had to cut the faces and then assemble it and then fabricate it 
but with the help of uh, FDM, FDM, we can do this entire shape without putting any effort. So, it can be manufactured directly. And also with laser machine that we have, we are uh, capable to etch and cut as well as uh, uh, many materials like uh, acrylic, wood, mica, teflon and so on and uh, we can etch and cut both the things can happen. Uh, few materials can be etched only like this, this glass, this glass it is here, you can see it is etched here and the image is uh, produced, we can etch we can etch any image, any alphabet. So, with this fine features and profile, the capability of machine is that it can etch and create a groove or channel at a micro level. So, with this, our capacity is that we can work at micro level machining and we can go for both creative as well as engineering aspects of job with this machine, with the laser machine. Okay. Okay, the capability or the resolution or I can say okay, accuracy better, but accuracy is up to 40 microns. So, we can print on flat as well as cylindrical shape jobs. Like you can see the glass we have printed the 4i laboratory name and logo, ITK logo. So, with this machine, with the roller attachment facility, we can etch, we can print, we can make a mark, we can groove slot or uh, any kind of non machining or like any kind of non contact machining can happen using this machine. So, in general, when we say word machining, the first thing that comes into the mind is okay, there might be some tool, some cutting might happen, contacts would be there, scrap would be produced, tool, tool will deteriorate. But uh, here, the with laser light, it comes from the source that is uh, and it has a non contact method, and the light from com come from the source and uh, it hits the workpiece surface and the material burns out and sometimes it gets evaporated. So, and by means of this uh, non contact method, um, itching, printing, cutting, machining, these things take place. Now, in this lab, we have number of machines cutting, printing, uh, or like, uh, like this is okay, this is cutting and printing on leather. Now, this is mica, okay. On mica, this printing is happening here, printing is happen on this mica here, okay. The etching. On mica, then texting on teak ply again with laser, and cutting also is done with laser in this component. Sometimes this this kind of cutting is also to be carried out on metals. Okay, this is carried out with uh, a machine known as abrasive water jet machining. So, with water jet cutting machine, we can cut any metal, any non metal. We can see this, this is a marble and this is granite, okay, this is granite, okay, it is a brittle material to cut. This is a Chinese dragon shape, it is cut with abrasive water jet machining. So, this is aluminum and we cut it from rack, uh, like this is rack gearing, this is rack gear actually. So, there is one more job of brass. Okay. This profile is called as aerodynamic profile. So, our students are at IIT Kanpur are working on this high pressure air, uh, this specific component is used there. So, uh, so this kind of job uh, also is uh, uh, carried out with this subtractive method of machining only with machining machine. So, this is 3D printed part, part that is the outer covering, outer covering of any shape, 
okay, outer shell covering. So, this is manufactured using vacuum forming machine, this is not with 3D printing, this is one more machine that is uh, able to produce the outer shape covering. So, it has a specific feature in that. So, this is vacuum forming machine. So, with the help of vacuum forming, we can form the sheet of any shape uh, as per our part or a die board according to that. Okay. We can make a hollow geometry as well as uh, four eye lab, uh, we support uh, mechanical as well as electronics here. So, in electronics we have number of machines to fabricate and to manufacture PCBs. This is printed circuit board. Okay. You can see this is raw PCB, these are the tracks, we have etched the material from the yellow surface area, where yellow area here. This is this brown one is copper bead here and uh, then we have the chemical coating also uh, to make it green uh, coated at all and uh, copper tracks are there and uh, to prevent it uh, from oxidation, we use green coating and uh, green liquid uh, is here to make it free from oxidation that is uh, that is green coating is happening. So, this printing of white here, this printing of white material here, this is called as tin coating. To print some alphabets, some pneumatics like it is showing the circuit diagram here uh, to clear uh, the IC numbers that has to be put on. So, we can put the weight, weight but what kind of soldering has to be in a way the product has to be soldered. So, all those symbols for transistors, symbol for ICs, earthing, input, output, then uh, printing the kind of uh, all the things that will be taken care within within the white color that is called as tin. So, here we help uh, the students to or the uh, com industries those come here to uh, 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 in mechanical as well in, in mechatronics, mechanical plus electronics. So, to help our students to develop their own prototypes, their own setups and experiments, machineries. So, BTEC project students also we support and we give classes, we provide training to the people who come here for the faculty development programs. We provide uh, hands on skill to our students and the guests who come here for learning and uh, support to fabricate their job. So, especially support people from industries and all those things are here. So, what we can see here is the machine is running, we can see the simulation of the machine as well as the actual machine is running here. So, the simulation is happening, you will see the material is being deposited here. So, all these layers that you can see as mesh here, these are supports, these supports would make the material to deposit over it. So, when the machine it has been completed on this side, now it has made one line here. So, it would not waste time to restart the machining from this point. When it, is, it has done, it has machining here means adding material. So, when the material is added over here, it will restart from this point only and keep depositing the material here. So, this is total 144 layers would be made to manufacture the part where that we have designed and estimated time here is 4 hour 32 minutes. That is the total time that is left here. So, it has been an hour that we have manufactured this product. So, I can pick this product from here, I will just pick it up. So, this part, this support I am removing. So, the brim part is there on the machine only. So, this is the final product that we have manufactured. So, we can see here that on this support, the complete material deposit is not, it is only the mesh. So, as the minimum material is deposited that can support the main material, that is the main filler material that is used here. So, here as we are using single spool, the same material is being used as support and main material. So, these supports you can see this was the final component that was desired here, final feature of my component here and this is the support that is removable. So, it is hollow from inside. So, this is the product that we have manufactured in our demonstration in rapid prototyping or we also call it additive manufacturing here. So, this is Tech B V30 machine, fuse deposition method machine again, 
uh, we are talking about this, uh, this is 3D printing machine like we have multiple additive manufacturing or rapid manufacturing or rapid prototyping technologies like stereolithography, digital light processing. Uh, stereolithography and uh, fuse deposition method are the major ones. Then also we have uh, laser methods like selective laser sintering, selective laser melting, electron beam melting, then uh, laminated manufacturing like laminate ob object manufacturing, all those methods are there. This is a 3D printing machine out of the types of the 3D printing machines. This use Cartesian coordinates, there are certain types of uh, FDM machines it is specifically 3D printing fuse deposition machining methods that, that use different kinds of coordinates. The Cartesian, Cartesian uses uh, the x, y, z, this is the Cartesian method, other methods are other uh, kinds of machines are delta, delta uh, FDM printers, the printers uh, use 6 axis 3D printer which are based upon delta technologies, machines operate, operate with uh, they also operate with Cartesian technology, but there is uh, more freedom in that. Then the polar machine is there, polar machine, the polar 3D printers, uh, in, the, in that the positioning is not determined by x, y and z coordinates, but by an angle like the pol polar coordinate system. So another uh, with um, 3D printing machine can be with robotic arms, different robotic arms can come and keep printing at one point. So there are major four kinds, Cartesian, Delta then uh, polar and robotic arms. So, this is Cartesian FDM machine. We have uh, gone through the demonstration of this machine in the 4i lab and uh, I hope you have enjoyed the demonstration and please come up with the questions anywhere uh, because this was uh, produced in 3 or 4 phases. We made the setup, we produced, we uh, they recorded the video in the lab and then I tried to uh, saw that video and then I have put my voice over here. So there might be some mismatching, so pardon for that and please come up with the questions wherever you think the things are not clear and uh, we'll meet in the next lecture, we will discuss further about the course. Thank you.